G'day folks, Jason here from the Outer Farm. We're actually on the Outer Farm property today. The plan of attack is, right where I'm standing is a fence line I've put in. The cattle have never grazed this side of the fence because it's been unfenced before. So this is a temporary fence I'm putting in because I want to graze this area, which I haven't used for probably, oh, it'd be five years now. I've just been mowing it, adding that compost or thatch layer back, but I'm going to use that for my winter pasture. So I've got a whippersnip all this. It was slashed down three months ago and then we had that 30 odd inches of rain and we haven't been able to get back in here with the tractor and even now we can't. It's that boggy. I can't even drive the car on without getting bogged. So we need a whippersnip at least two foot either side of this star pickets because I need to finish this wiring, this barbed wire, this five strands I'm putting up and we're also going to build a cocky gate from that star picket to that star picket. Without further ado... Finally finished all that clearing now off that fence line. It's about two foot where I whip snipped. I had to do it about three or four times in between showers. It's supposed to be a lot clearer tomorrow, so I'll probably run wire tomorrow. I've got a few other jobs I want to do now, like I've got to set up this cocky gate, take it home and drill the holes out. Basically what I've got to do is mark where these wires are, then I'll drill an inch hole, because that's to feed the wires to go through to form that cocky gate. Excuse me, pocket knife. Put an arrow on each one of these if I need to drill these holes. When I get home, I'll put it on the drill press. It's going to be a load easier to do. That one there, and one more wire to run at the top. I know that one's at the top. As you can see, I've started pulling this wire now. I was up bright and early this morning. I've already run two wires. It's got to film it, but it just rained all morning, off and on, off and on. I had to get the camera back in the car. It's taken longer than, sh than it really should. The amount of rain we've had, we had 68 mil, which is just over, what's that, about two and a half inches. The day before yesterday, and this morning we've had 20 so far. The ground is actually saturated so I've got to be careful how much strain I put on this because it's only a temporary fence and the two star pickets down the other end at the cocky gate will end up pulling out of the ground once I go above that brace. These bottom two aren't going to be too bad for tensioning just that the next three are going to be a pain because I go them too tight like I mentioned they're going to pull that cocky gate out of the ground. Get these tensioned up and we'll run, run the last three before we start building that cocky gate. Hopefully that won't be too much. Looks pretty good. Next, that's the next rear won't be to do like that. It'll definitely pull those star pickets out of the ground. I always give it three tight turns. So Oh, it's two. Should have done one more. That's it. Then I'll just thread the rest. It's not the way I'd tie it if it was a permanent fence, but this temporary fence is only going to be up here until my driveway gets done. Then I can throw those four foot timers down the driveway, and this will come up, and the cows will graze right back that driveway. Hope I'm hoping to get the driveway in before the start of spring, towards the end of winter, depending on this rain. If the rain keeps going, you won't be to get machinery in here. I can't even drive the four-wheel drive off that track, and even when I'm going down the driveway, I need it in four-wheel drive because uh, it's that boggy, the tides just keep spinning. I know we'll go wire that up and we'll run the other three.
gonna tie it off this end first. I just noticed when I strain that last wire at the other end where the brace is to go to the cocky gate, it started to pull out the ground. When I put them in seven months ago, or oh, probably be six months ago, the ground was a lot dry and after all that rain, 38 inch I think total now, since the last six months, and I think 15 of those have been the last six weeks. The ground's real, ground's real boggy, and I know it's starting to pull out the ground a bit. I'll tie it off here, and we'll do tension there. I think these three are gonna have to be pretty slack. I'll get the cocky gate in, and as it dries out, I may be able to tension them up. Right here is where I'm talking about. See how that's leaning back in? Because I tensioned that third wire or second wire down, starting to pull out of the ground. So be careful with this one. I don't want it too loose, but I don't want it, don't want to over tighten it either. I'm going to deal with it slack and then deal with it later when the ground dries out. Uh, how many holes am I going on that one? One, two, three. One, two, three. When I'm twitching the wire, I like to put one underneath and one over top and just go in the opposite direction. So you don't need to go twice around. Just make sure that your eyes or your points of your wire are facing down. You don't want the livestock coming through and poking their eyes. Yep, that's fairly loose, but once this ground dries out and you get the cocky gate on, I'll have a look then. Probably need to readjust it today, but this drop is just dragging out because of the rain. Every time I pull out the camera, seems to rain. I was sitting here having lunch like this now. Hardly a cloud in the sky. Finished lunch, pulled out the camera, started to drizzle. Unbelievable. So what I'm going to do now is set up that end post for the cocky gate. So that's the post there. I've marked it out against the barbed wire fence where I wanted it. So now I've just got to drill out these holes. I was going to do it on the drill press at home but I had to go last night just for the spade bit. I thought a hole saw might be a bit hard for a hold saw spinning in there being hardwood but the spade bit went straight through so we continue down I've got another four more holes to drill and we'll drill them out First thing I'm going to do is get my high tensile wire. I think it's about four mil. I'm not sure what that is. Is imperial? What's that? About an eighth? It's not sure, but yeah, it's about four mil thick. What that does, that goes down the bottom. This handle then goes up here and locks in here. So I'll also set that up with some chain. So you need this leg on the bottom. What that does is when you put your cocky gate back in to position, it sits behind that wire and locks that bottom section in. And when you get your lock up the top, and you get your chain on, and you wedge that back in the position, it puts tension there and stops that bottom leg kicking out. So we'll get that wired up, and then we'll put the chain on. That's pretty good, about where I want it. Time that'll make its own shape once you start using it. So I've got about a oh that looks like a better oh, four inch gap there. I want to keep that all the way along the top. We'll put this handle on now. So I'm just using a bit of hardwood as a handle. Pre-drilled it last night when I was at home. Just got to put that washer chain on there. Every time you put something down, I don't know if you can hear the Welshing under my feet, but it's just like a mud here now. The water's coming to the surface and dirt's coming through. Every time you put a tool, a tool down or your utensil, 
get covered in mud. I haven't been walking on it that much. You imagine cattle and livestock walking through here constantly over these paddocks. I just went through the paddock before there before to have a look. Now, oh, the amount of pugging that's in these paddocks now, because the rain we've had over the last six months, is unbelievable. Right, the lock position is going to be about there. It's going to lock in there and chain off there. So the chain I need, the length I need the chain, in the amount. So if I leave a couple spare, cut him off at there and I should be right. Yep. That's about, that describes my day today. I'm surprised it hasn't started raining again now. I've got this video camera going. Tell you what, I couldn't have got a bolt that was any tighter. Stuff went through. That would be embarrassing. Righto, that's on. Tighten that up. Now just got to get some wire on now. So that works there. That locks that in position. When the barbed wire comes through here, you have a loop on this end and you hook that over that handle so it can't come off. Run some wire now. So I put that bottom wire in on this cocky gate and I've set it, so it goes all the way to the end there and it's tied to the star picket down there so what you're best off doing is have a look at the top here what I did is I offset the top I used a bit of barbed wire because I didn't have any galvanised wire with me galvanised wire is a lot easier you haven't got those prongs in it to deal with but oh well I had none spare so I had to use barbed wire I think I piped myself twice so what I've done here is, you've got to lay yourself an offset, so what happens with this handle, when you bring it around and you lock him onto this gate pretty hard to do this one handed see how that gap closes up that, that handle comes around and locks it in and that keeps it square to the gate so that's why I've set it like that, and when you're doing it by yourself, you're trying to wire that one down the bottom and that wants to fall over. So make yourself a, a loop around there with either galvanised or barbed wire. Tie it back to your fence, making sure you're leaving a bit of a, a V or a gap. You don't want it dead directly where you finish because you won't have that, you've got to have that taunt. So when it tightens up with the handle, it locks in position. If, it, if you haven't got that and it's loose, it's just going to flop around, your handle's going to drop. It won't open, but you want to make it taunt so it actually pulls that back when you're straining it. And also, this morning you'll notice that I've had that sag in that line because that post there is laying back because all the water we've had, by well, looks this, it's three inches out of the ground pulled back. It's that pugging, it's that boggy, it's just pulling the post out. When it was dry it was fine. But So what I want to do here is when I tighten this up here, that'll also correct that post and lay it over a little bit. So work on your bottom wire, which I've done. Now the next wire we're going to do is this top wire here and get it right. And then once you've strained that, you can use the handle, lock it off, and then you can run your intermediate wires in between. In my case, there's three to run. Now we've got that tied off the other end, we'll see if we need any fine tuning. We'll try and lock this gate now and see if we can get a bit of sag in that line, but like I said, it's got to come back about four inches. Down the other end, when you're tying this top wire off, make just go around three tight loops. Don't 
wind the rest of the wire on, you're probably fine. You need to do a bit of a tweaking. If you've got it too tight, you won't be able to open that and just back off those three loops, those three um, turns around the wire, and just feed yourself back a bit more wire onto here. When I done my first cocky gate, it probably took me two to three adjustments to get it right the first time. Sorry, not to get it right, but to get it right three times before I, I over tensioned the wire the first time. So you can see this one's got a bit of sag. Probably can't see it there from the camera, the angle, but there's a fair bit of sag there, and you do need a bit. So you line your timber up. I'm going to make mine above that hole because I need to wire that one. That should just go around. Locks in position. Oh, that's perfect. Bottom one's tight. Top one's tight. And that's where the other one's going to lock off in that wire. So for now, at least the rain's on cue again. Just turn the camera on. Bang. So I'll sit that there. What I'll do now is I'll go through and I'll put the other three wires through this gate. And then we'll come back and have a look. Hopefully it stops raining. As they say, the proof is in the pudding. We remove this loop now, and we'll open this cocky gate up. You get there, make sure it goes some rubbish. Hopefully, hopefully. Take your cocky gate out. Probably shouldn't have let go of that, there's a reason. I'll let you know that in a minute. Locking back up again, like I said with the cocky gate, in through the loop at the bottom, pull the loop up, handle, locking back in position. What I'll need to do now is make up a loop to go on here. If you go back to the cocky gate video, I'll show you how to close it and the reason why you go over and then you're underneath the only Locking thing left in. to do here now is you notice yesterday i opened that gate and i said i probably shouldn't have done that because this just come off a a spool like a tight spool this barbed wire and when i undid it it started to coil itself luckily because i've got five strands it would have tangled upon itself and then especially by yourself trying to untangle five strands of barbed wire on a cocky gate and try and and stand it back up it's not impossible, but it, it takes quite some time. It does, this wire will eventually, with the heat, straighten itself out, but that's still not the issue. When you drag the cocky, cocky gate open in through the grass and lay down, there's still a chance of entanglement of those wires, and it's a pain trying to get them untangled and stand it back up. Just about all cocky gates, or good cocky gates you see, they should have spreader bars amongst the wire. So I'm just using an inch poly pipe here for my spreaded bars, but you can use steel pipe, you can use timber. This sort of had poly pipe lying around. For a gate this size, I think this spans four foot, four and a half foot, so I can drive tractors and that through it. Four and a half foot, I think, converts around to, you want that three by four, 12, roughly 14 foot wide. So this is four and a half meters. You should have two spreader bars on this gate. So what a spreader bar does, there's two reasons you want a spreader bar. The first reason is, generally when you strain a barbed wire fence, your fence itself is going to be a lot tighter or tauter than your cocky gate. Because your cocky gate, you've got to have a bit of give, a bit of play, so when you stand it back up, it straightens up. And you're generally not going to get that as tensioned or as your, as your fence itself. Because your fence, remember, has generally got strainers on it, or you can tighten them up. Your cocky gate hasn't. So, two reasons. One reason is you don't want the, car, the cattle when that's been grazed and this is greener outside, you don't want your cattle putting their head in there because they've got a tendency to step through it. They can just step through that, keep going, keep grazing. So what a spreader bar does is you wire it to the gate so they can't pull that wire apart. 
The second purpose of a spreader bar, especially in a cocky gate, is like I just mentioned. When you go to open that gate up, these wires are just going to collapse on one another. By having spreader bar in there, it doesn't allow the wire to collapse. So you can drag it late down on the grass and you're still going to keep that distance apart. So what I'll do is we'll head up and we'll drill these holes out and we'll come and connect this to the gate. We'll go through now and mark where I need these holes drilled. Then we'll head over and drill them. Beautiful. We'll head back over, we'll warm up. That's it. Have a look how strong that is now. There's no way you're going to pull that apart. And also, when you open the gate, that's just going to lay down on that. There's no, before it was all sloppy. You've just got to have one more put in down there, break it into even thirds. But I haven't got any more consumables. I think I've got some down the shed. But I'll do that at a later date. The only thing left to do now is to make our safety loop or safety catch for this handle. That way, if people put it on incorrectly, it's still catching on the loop, providing they slide the loop up. So just grab yourself a bit of wire, put it around. This is gonna be very basic, nothing flash. You wanna just leave yourself a bit of gap because you've gotta be able to slide that loop up and down on that gap. So that's probably big enough. Thread him in there. I just finished this knot off by bending, I've cut off those loose ends, just bend those loose ends down so whoever is opening the gate won't poke themselves on those ends. So that's it, all finished as you can see, simple knot, I just done a double granny, three twists at the top, gives you sort of a bit of a handle to hold on to, rather than just have the twists and it's poking your hand, you've got a bit of bulk there to play with that handle and slide him up and down. Like I said, it's nowhere near a flash knot. Just make sure when you do do this that your loop isn't too big. The last thing you want is to have this handle locked in position and that loop just slide straight off the, off the wire and your handle, that's pointless. So mine's big enough. I sort of like to lock mine three quarters away to the handle. But when you lock it, make sure that push down, it goes underneath. As you can see now, that loop can't go any further. It's hitting the bottom of the handle and it's touching the barbed wire. And if it was to push it, it locks onto that barbed wire itself there and can't go over. So when you're closing, always make sure that you engage the handle and that loop is potentially engaging be before that barbed wire. If it was down there, you're sort of not allowing yourself much room. I like to come about a half to two thirds, oh sorry, half to three quarters of weight in the handle. You guys an idea and put in perspective how much rain we've had i'm 85 kilos not sure what that is in pounds but check out the tracks along each side of that cocky gate where i've been walking over the only last day and a half of making this video and building that gate i brought all that water and soil and turned it into mud across rainfall. that surface but then again i'm the last person to ever complain about too much rainfall i reckon you're better off looking at it than looking for it Cheers, Trent. I told you I'd use it somewhere, mate. I love that saying. Well, we've just come to the end of yet another video. I was going to do an opening, a grand opening and closing on this cocky gate and show you how it works. But the only thing left to do now is obviously put that last spreader bar in, but I won't open it. On second thoughts, I know how much Nicole loves these cocky gates opening and closing. She should have had these in a five, five bar or four bar metal gate any day. 
So I'll give her the privilege of opening it for the first time. I may even take a video of that and I'll, you can actually see how much, on, on the expression on the face, how much she loves it. So on that note, hope you have a good morning, a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening guys, wherever you're watching this from and we'll catch you later.